Hello friends, welcome back to my YouTube channel Nastin Padasali. So this video is a part 2 of the shift 1 question paper analysis. Already I just made an important analysis of question and their answer for shift 1. If you didn't watch the video, watch the part 1 video and for shift 2 students I already uploaded. So first question is head to tail polarity in planaria. There was a question has been asked and there was a list of things that has been given. So you can refer this particular paper. In this particular paper you can able to get all the answers friends. Okay. So in that what they just mentioned in planarian regeneration wind signaling inhibits the head formation and wind signaling promotes the trail regeneration at a posterior facing wood ok next what they just mentioned so this particular thing RNA of I of gene notum results in regeneration of so when they inhibit this particular notum gene by using this RNA technology it results in a regeneration of tail in the place of head ok so here what they just given inhibition of notum leads to two head no this is a wrong option when they inhibit the notum by using its rna technology it leads to the formation of tail in the place of head next expression of notum leads to the formation of head of course it is a correct option next inactivation of wing pathway leads to the formation of two head organism so for which you can either refer this particular article okay so it has been published in 2006. So, here they just mentioned inhibition of components of wind signaling pathway causes a regeneration of head in the place of tail, thereby generating an organism with a two head with a head facing on opposite direction. So, this option is also correct. When they inactivate or inhibit the wind signaling pathway, it leads to the formation of two head organism. So, you can refer this article or uh, this article or this particular article. Next fish characteristics identification so these are the characteristics and many will be uh, uh, worrying about this whether they are following a oviparous or viviparous so fish has a capacity to undergo oviparous or oviviparous or viviparous all the options are correct so with regard to viviparity this was the oldest article published in 1981 so here you can able to see based on fossil evidences they identified that shark and rays will follow uh, will have this particular viviparity okay so all the three or ovo vv paras vv paras ovo vv paras all options are correct next is regarding to transcription factor and the structure of transcription factor this is a correct thing uh, so transcription factor 2 they follow uh, the, the transcription structure of transcription factor is a zinc finger and MYC transcription factor will have a helix loop helix structure and gin transcription factor will have a loosened uh, zipper and crow transcription factor in the structure they can able to find helix turn helix. So, this is an example this is an article in this article they just mentioned zinc finger for this T transcription factor 2A and in this article you can able to find with respect to C my uh, C MYC transcription factor which is a master regulator in cell growth and proliferation and they have a basic helix loop helix structure and regarding to C June in this particular paper they just mentioned the C June transcription factor has a basic losing zipper uh, as the hair structure next is regarding to crow so this particular article you can able to refer the, both the crow as well as CI protein are homodimeric at the same time the transcription factor are helix turn helix pattern okay next there is a question asked with respect to phosphorylation of CTD of RNA polymerase enzyme for which you can either refer so, you can refer this particular James T. Watson group. So, here they just mentioned promoter escape required phosphorylation of polymerase stain. So, here you can able to see in eukaryotic promoter escape involved two important steps and these steps are not being seen in bacteria. So, one is a ATP hydrolysis and another one is a phosphorylation of polymerase. So, the largest subunit of RNA polymerase have a carboxy terminal domain which is also called a stale and this carboxy domain consists of repeated structure of heptapeptide sequences that is made up of tyrosine, serine, proline, threonine, serine, proline, serine. Okay. So, here you can able to see and each repeat consist of, con contains a site for phosphorylation by specific kinases. So, this thing you can refer and here you can able to see phosphorylation of this particular carboxy terminal domain lead to an exchange of initiation factor for those factor required for elongation and RNA processing. So, let me explain you with this particular diagram. Here you can able to see this is a CTD cell and phosphorylation state has been given. So, here that is serine that is phosphorylation of serine at position number 5 you can able to see over here is seen upon the promoter escape and is associated with the recruitment of capping factor. So, once the phosphorylation occurs at serine at position number 5 it will be uh, leading to uh, it will be giving space for capping to occur. Next if the phosphorylation has been occur at position number 
2 means where phosphorylation of serine at position number 2 means it generally seen during the process of elongation and it is associated with the equipment of splicing factor. So, at C stage this can be given. Next is the difference between chlorophyll A and chlorophyll B. So, chlorophyll A is a principal compound whereas chlorophyll B is the only helping authority and chlorophyll A is present in plant algae and bacteria whereas chlorophyll B is present only in plants and algae and it is absent in bacteria. Next chlorophyll A observes a range of violet to blue light and orange red light from sunlight whereas chlorophyll B observe only orange red light. And regarding to absorption range chlorophyll A has absorption range of high that is 430 nanometer to 660 nanometer whereas with respect to chlorophyll B the absorption is very low with 450 nanometer to 650 nanometer and chlorophyll A absorbs a red wavelength more and it will be reflecting blue, blue green light whereas chlorophyll B will be absorbing violet blue light and they will be reflecting orange red light. Next chlorophyll uh, chlorine ring in chlorophyll A has a methyl group at third position whereas in chlorophyll B the chlorine ring have a aldehyde attached to them. The structure of chlorophyll A is uh, soluble that is it is has a low solubility in polar solvent and regarding to this particular chlorophyll B they are highly soluble in methyl alcohol and have a high solubility in polar solvent and with regarding to structure it has a CS3 side group in profiling ring whereas with respect to chlorophyll B they have a aldehyde group in profiling ring and this is a molecular formula you can able to see and there is an important question that has been asked in collagen helix so the structure of collagen is made up of 35 percentage of glycine and 11 percentage of alanine and 21 percentage of proline this you can find in Leninger book page number 77 so the 4 hydroxy pronoun is uncommon uh, amino acid, it is a derivative of. So, in the Leninger book, they had given a detailed analysis, friends. So, 4 hydroxy proline as well as 4 hydro, uh, 5 hydroxy lysine, both are present in collagen. Okay. So, next question abortive escape condition. So, abortive escape condition or abortive initiation refers to repetitive synthesis and release of short nascent RNAs by RNA polymerase. So, here in the again in 442 page number in that particular James T. Watson can able to see. Uh, so, during the process of initiation the RNA polymerase will bind to a promoter in a closed complex then it will be converting the closed complex into a open complex. After some time what that will be doing means there will be a phase of initiation is for followed after promoter escape. So, once the enzyme has synthesized a series of short RNAs, the size is ranging from 10 base pairs, it is called abortive initiation. The, so, the size of transcript is 10 base pairs. So, during this particular point, the enzyme will be re leaving the promoter and it will be entering into an elongation phase. Okay, so you can refer these things they are, I had given. So what uh, there are another question has been asked with regarding to heme uh, synthesis in humans, friends. So you can refer this particular article which has been published on 2014. So here you can able to see the synthesis of heme occurred to eight step process. Okay, so first step stay, takes place in mitochondrial matrix and it involves a condensation of glycine with succinyl CoA enzyme catalyzed by an enzyme called. Uh, uh, delta amino levulinic acid synthase 2 in erythroid cell. Okay. So, they, it will be forming an intermediate compound called a gamma ALE and it will be uh, exported to cytosol where it will be converted through uh, for a 4 enzymatic reaction it will be converted into co pro for pyronegine. Okay. Then it will be uh, transported to mitochondrial inner membrane. First it get transported to mitochondrial matrix. Again it get transported to mitochondrial inner membrane and it will be finally forming this PPIX. Okay. So, this particular cascade is very important. You can refer that particular article or you can refer this particular article. Next as a question regarding to gap filling in prokaryotics. The enzyme which is gap filling is again DNA polymerase 1. Since DNA polymerase 1 is having 5 prime through 3 prime exonuclease activity. So, it will removes the RNA primer as well as it fills the gap between Okasaki filament with Okasaki fragment with the DNA. Okay. So, with regard to uh, eukaryotic, okay, the polymerase delta can take place the E. coli polymerase 1 in filling gap. So, in e eukaryotic polymerase delta will having the gap filling capa capacity. Next, there is a question asked with respect to seed germination in response to red and fair light. This you can refer chapter number 17 in Tay's book. Okay. So, phytochrome is a pigment that is involved in photo morphogenetic process. So, phytochrome uh, they exist in two form. One is a red light absorbing form called PR form and far light absorbing form uh, called as PF form. Okay. So, phytochrome is synthesized in dark in PR form. So, absorption of red light will uh, uh, once this PR form absorbs a red light it will convert it into PFR form and absorption of far red light by PFR converts it into 
P are formed. Okay, so which light they are observing? If they observe red light, then from PR it will be converted into PFR. Once this PFR observes a far red light, then it will be converted to PR form. It is a kind of photo reversibility. Next, xanthomonas oryces uses which signal for biofilm? The correct thing is the diffusible signal. Okay, here so in this particular article, they just mention among a different signaling form follicle. So there are different signaling molecule like NSL homocerin lactose, diffusible signal factor, an oligopeptide, and auto induced. Okay, so with regard to different signaling uh, molecule, this DSF, which is called as diffusible signal factor uh, factors, uh, produced by array of bacterial pathogens. So your Xanthomonas oryzae is also using this particular DSF factor. Next things with respect to cancer and origin. So already while well, discussing shift two question, I just mentioned you uh, the cancer. You can refer this particular article. So cancer, uh, so carcinoma means cancer that has been originated from epithelial tissue like inner and external, inner or external lining of body. Sarcoma means cancer which has been originated from supportive or connective tissue and leukemia means cancers of bone marrow and melanoma means uh, cancers originating from plasma cells of bone marrow. Next, there is a question with Rag asked to a sugar pec uh, pucker. Okay, so here I can giving you, uh, just give you a structure. So, the structure of C3 endo is observed in A confirmation that is ADNA as well as RNA whereas C2 endo is observed in confirmation. It depends upon a phosphorus space distance only friends. Okay, The distance between the neighborous phosphorus atom and the orientation of phosphorus with regarding to sugar and bases. So, this particular structure it will be very much helpful. Next question with regarding to anti-apoptotic protein BCL2. So, this particular article you can refer. This is the oldest article published on year 1998. So, BCL2 is a family of protein that has been uh, uh, involved in regulation of apoptotic cell. So, it consists of both anti-apoptotic as well as pro-apoptotic. Anti-apoptotic include BCL2 and BCL XL. This anti-apoptotic membrane will be preventing apoptosis either by uh, using the cysteine proteases as caspases or by preventing the release of mitochondrial apoptotic factors like cytochrome C. Okay. So, after entering the cytochrome or uh, cytoplasm, cytochrome C and this apoptosis inducing factor, they will be directly activating a caspases. Okay. And with regarding to pro-apoptotic membrane, it include backs and back they trigger the release of capsis, uh, capsis from death antagonistic okay so uh, this particular article you can refer next thing is there is regard to activity of glycogen phosphorylase and glycogen synthase the correct answer is that after phosphorylation glycogen phosphorylase will activity will increase whereas after phosphorylation this glycogen synthase activity will reduce so you can refer this particular article so in this article uh, the glycogen synthase is a primary regulated by modulating activity of uh, glycogen synthase so, this enzyme is involved in the process called glycogenesis process. The enzyme exists in two forms. One is deposphorylated form, whereas uh, when they are not phosphorylated, they are in active form. But another form is phosphorylated form and during this phosphorylated, they are getting inactivated. So, during the phosphorylation, the enzyme activity get reduces. Whereas, with regarding to this glycogen phosphorylase, which is involved in glycogenolysis or glycogen degradation. So, here you can be able to see the enzyme exists in two particular forms. And when the enzyme is undergoing phosphorylation process, the activity get increases. Okay, next thing is regarding to which of the following does not occur during heat acclimatation. The correct answer is increased salt sweat. Okay, so there will be a uh, loss of electrolytes only friends. So, uh, I am not sure about the correct answer for this question whether it is increased salts and sweats or not. But here they had given, it was published on CDC website that is National Institute of Occupational Safety and Health. So, acclimatation is a beneficial physiological adaptation that occur during repeated exposure to hot environment. During this process, there will be increased sweating efficiency and uh, there will be greater sweat pressure and there will be a reduced electrolyte loss in sweat. But here they had given increased salt in sweat like that given. So, the correct option is increased salt. With, it will not occur during acclimatation. Rest of the thing like circulation will be stable and there will be a lower body temperature and lower heart rate. So, there will be a decreased cardiac output and there will be a proper distribution of blood into the skin. So, here you can able to see increased skin blood flow at a given core temperature. Next thing, which technique is used to separate the mixture of molecule by the differential migration to stationary medium under the influence of electric medium. I am not correct whether the ion exchange chromatography is correct or not. If it is strong, then please do tell me. Next thing is regarding to the amino acyl tRNA synthase. Again, I do not know the correct statement. I think this particular option is correct. And again, a uh, few are saying this particular like amino acyl tRNA synthase bind to cognate tRNA exclusively by anticodon pairing only to some tRNA. You can refer this particular book. So, uh, analysis of genes and genome in this book they had given, uh, or else you can refer this page number 515 in uh, James T. Watson. Here they had given why uh, the, this particular option is correct means amino acyl tRNA synthase bind to cognate in, uh, tRNA 
exclusively by anticoagulant only some tRNA because uh, you can able to see uh, uh, bacteria lack this particular synthase enzyme for charging this tRNA for glutamine with a cognate glutamate that is with a cognate amino acid okay so what the uh, so glutamate uh, the, the, they are they, the same uh, amino acid tRNA synthase enzyme which will be charging this glutamate will be loading and again by a process called amidation this glutamate will be converted into glutamate so based on that I am saying you I don't know correct option with regarding to this particular thing I think this particular option and this particular option is correct I, I, and here what they just mentioned I think this particular option which I entered is wrong only the official answer key will be out only then I can able to gather this particular thing then ionosine contain hyposanthin what's the base pair uh, I don't know what question is that but ionosine is a pure nuclear sequence okay and it is linked by N9 hydrogen to the C1 of carbon of ribose and adenosine will be deaminated to ionosine and which is a miscoding and this particular ionosine base pass with the cytosine okay so ionosine base pass with the cytosine next is the increasing order of hydrophobic amino acid from Merck website only I just got this particular thing so here at a pH of level 2 leucine is having high hydrophobic that is leucine will be very much high hydrophobic whereas at pH of 7 phenylalanine is very hydrophobic so you can refer Merck website that is amino acid reference start and also you can refer this particular tablet column uh, based on which you can be able to arrange increasing order of hydrophobic amino acid next there is a question with regard to Mutagen and their effect. So, first thing is based on like fibromyuracil. It is a induces point mutation via base substitution, and this particular base pair will change from AT to GC or GC to AT. Okay. And next thing is ethyl methyl sulfonate, and it's a chemical mutagen that will be inducing GC to AT transition. So, ethyl group will be reacting with a guanine group and it will be leading to a formation of abnormal base called O6 ethyl guanine. So, during the process of replication, DNA polymerase will be catalyzing the process frequently, will be pacing a thymine instead of cytosine opposite to O6 ethyl guanine okay so following a subsequent round the original GC base pair will become an AT base pair so it is uh, giving a transition mutation at last intercalating agent accreting RN so it is a class of intercalating agent so these are planar molecule what they will be do they will be inserting between the base pair so when the replication in DNA occurs the region of this intercalated molecule that is one or both daughter stand are synthesized that either lack one or more nuclear or it will be having additional nuclear so this this will be uh, altering a radiant shame so intercalating agent like accreting orange will be leading to leading to frame sheet mutation next thing is with regard to GPCR signaling so first uh, this is an important step so there will be antagonistic binding or ligand binding then there will be a, a confirmation change in receptor then there will be interaction between receptor and gene protein next there will be a G protein will be leading a confirmation change and next G protein and effector interaction will be occurred then there will be changes in effector activity as at last the uh, ionic conductance or second messenger will be changing so here you can be able to see once the first step is the ligand binding so once the ligand binding has been act, uh, occurs mean then it will be activating a G protein so active form then the uh, surface of receptor will be dissociated like alpha subunit and beta subunit then they will be activating a specific effector and then uh, there will be a release of few secondary messenger and then the secondary messenger will be recognized by a protein kinases thus leading to activation and triggering of signal cascade that be releasing a particular cellular event so so next is with regarding to chick gas relation so color sickle uh, is a nothing but a local thickening of cell at a posterior edge of upper edge of area of pellucida called AP blast. Next primitive groove is nothing but the beginning of gastrulation is marked by appearance of this particular groove in a caudal end of AP blast layer and this particular groove is responsible for cranial and caudal axis and with regarding to Henson node, Henson node is nothing but it is a functional equivalent of dorsal, dorsal lip of amphibian blastropod which is an organizer okay. Next is regarding to plant flowering locus gene. So, flowering locus C is acting as a repressor protein and it acts mainly by repressing the activity of this floral locus T and also suppressor of overexpression constant. Next, flower locus D is required for responding to the systemic accurate response leading to systemic accumulation of the salicylic acid at the same time enhancement of disease resistant. Next is flowering locus T which will be promoting flower in plant photoperiod pathway at the same time it will be promoting a vernalization. Okay, next thing with respect to nervous system. So, this is a neural glial cells found in CNS and neural glial cells found in PNS. So, astrocytes they maintain a blood brain barrier and oligodendrocytes they will be myelinating axons and epidermal cells they will be line of indices and centrocranial and they are involved in producing the CSF and microglia they are involved in phagocytosis process. So, option number 1 is strong because oligodendrocytes they are involved in formation, myelin sheet formation and microglia cell it is capsulitic right? because microglia cells are involved in phagocytosis and astrocytes, astrocytes are involved in forming uh, BBB that is plain blood barrier formation. 
information okay so that's it for today's video friends i hope i hope this particular question has been really helpful if you find any particular mistakes or any wrongness please do discuss in the comment section below thank you friends thanks for watching this video